Keep her on course, lad. Well, I'm sir, but the wind's had enough. Let her fall off a point. She won't sail into the eye of the wind. That's her ticket. Now we've had every kind of weather this trip, sir, except fog. It's queer air, snow, damp, and sound at sea. Not being able to hear is worse than not seeing, sir. Not seeing? What do you mean, not seeing? Well, I don't know what I'd rather be without, sir. Sight or sound. When you finish debating the matter, perhaps you'd give your mind to the ship. We're luffing again. That'll fall off another point, son. Aye, aye, sir. Young Tammy McGregor there. He's coming on splendid for a first trip, sir. Change him. Sir? Have a mind to catch tomorrow's tide before I freeze. Die of boredom. We'll change him. All we want now, sir, is for fog. We'll have had the lot there. I dare say you'll whistle it up for us. We've had everything else. She's quite got to. If I don't make the Mersey on tomorrow's tide, Fraser will have me quartered. Keep her as she is. We've coal enough. Still smelling, sir. It's always smelling. It's like a gas. It's always like a gas. Put a man down there with a good nose. Already have, sir, but he was overcome. Put Holyoke down there. His own smell should damp it. you can think of, eh? Act of God, earthquake, fever, plague, you think of it, we'll get it. is thick, the Helen May will be delayed. My instructions were that she should not be. Is it a time charter? It's the first consignment of a particularly valuable cargo of petroleum in a refined state. We have a guaranteed delivery date. And there's a possibility of a regular charter from Philadelphia. Petroleum? Its carriage can be much improved to great profit. Profit? And there's constant argument about how it should be carried, in barrels or in bulk. When Albert was alive, it occupied him greatly. Well, if there's fog along the river, you won't see it this week. It's Friday now. On the contrary, my instructions were specific. No, I just happened to overhear it in the agents. Petroleum. It's going to revolutionize heating and, and, and lighting. And Fraser's got his nose into the carriage. Just wait till I tell James about it. When's he due? He's due on the tide. But he'll never make it in this fog. There's not a ship moving on the Mersey. Fraser will be delayed as well, then. Aye. And he can't afford many more delays. 
Do you know, I can't understand our Elizabeth sending out these cards. They only cost coppers, you know. You can get three for a shilling. I mean, just imagine it. Living up there in the Toxteth Road among the quality and the carriage trade and sending out these. My election manifesto cost more. Not even a good likeness of Albert. Never liked Albert. Well, he... he never belonged, now, did he? Oh, I know he was Fraser's son and all that, but... but he never seemed to be a true northerner. Don't know what he was, except a fop of the first water. <clears throat> the housekeeper's here, Mum. Housekeeper? For James. I'll see her here. Oh, well, I suppose it's high time he got someone to look after him properly. Quite. Now, there'll be no reason why his poor little daughter Charlotte can't come and stop once in a while. Packing her off to the country with some governess. Out of sight, out of mind. Died in the Argentine. <laughs> Womanising and tittle tattle, I'll be bound. You understand I'm making this offer of 30 shillings without speaking to Captain and Eden. Everything will depend upon whether you can give satisfaction or not. When the captain eats, he eats alone, and he doesn't like fish. There is a certain amount of entertaining to do, but then I don't suppose you're qualified to handle that. I'll do me best to give satisfaction, Mrs. O'Needin. Is it, uh, living in? For the moment, yes. I'll give you the keys. Oh, I'd better warn you. A very full inventory has been taken. I took it. I'll be very grateful for the start. Yes, well, your testimonials weren't exactly glowing. Keep sharp, look out. Red, white and round, a tongue boy. Red, white and round. Aye, aye, sir. Call the mark. By the deep, eight and a half. Sandy and shoaling, sir. Have you fell off a loft there? Nothing showing on any quarter, sir. You're not going to find it if you search all night. Bring her up all standing. Drop the hook and get the canvas down. Cut her down to half. Don't put a leadsman in the train, sir. This speed, we'd never fetch the bottom. We got a good landfall last time. I'll tell you when we're in the river. When we're in sail, we'd have stopped by now, sir. We're not windbound now, mister. There's a lot of money on this charter. <sighs> Bring her up again, Chief. There'll be nothing moving in this. saw the tongue boy. It's miles astern now, man. Go on, Tammy, give it Dixie.
Keep a line too. Hard to port. Bump boatman. What's he doing lying up in the road? Hooligan boat. He must have a full head of steamer. Midships. Crow rocks. She must have been looking for the channel, boy, same as us. You better raise a copter. Break the cover off the longboat. All hands, all hands. What good will you do? She's hit the crow rocks, sir. There may be men in the water. Nothing can live after that. But, sir. You'll be picking up cinder. Men. Cinders. Well, this tide, you'll be on the crow rocks yourself. Sir, we've got to put a boat out. I mean, she might only have broken in half. There'll be men injured, seamen in the water. Get some pieces. Fog lifts. Not before. Well, my guess is she hit the crow rock, sir, and the old lot went up like tinder, and she nearly ran us down. Where were you anchored, Captain Baines? Well, we were stood well off the road, sir. We couldn't find the tongue boy, but I'm bare to say it was plain foolhardy maintaining that speed in that visibility, sir. The master had instructions to make a fast passage. I, I, I understand. You didn't put a boat out yourselves? No, sir. But you were within a mile? Well, we'd have been foraging blind, sir, and on the rocks ourselves. Did you hear anything after the explosion? No, sir, nothing. And you didn't go in to look? No, sir. That doesn't sound like you, Captain Baines. Well, she went up in seconds, sir. I mean, there wasn't a spar we picked up that wasn't burned or charred. Oh, uh, my condolences, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Baines. I, I've just come ashore. You see, I hadn't heard. Uh, I... Well, I didn't know him very well, ma'am. But a topping young feller he was, Mr. Elbin. Yes, well, uh, thank you, Captain Baines. Aye, aye, sir. Why does a man like that stay with your brother? My brother picked him out of the forecastle. Well, he doesn't pick men out of the water. You can't be sure there were any there. No, and now nobody ever will know. The message from Philadelphia from our charterers. They'll wait till after the inquiry, but. It's not a very good advertisement for us as carriers. Have they made their intention plain? Now, you don't have to be an insurance assessor to know when people are having second thoughts. They have a way of being otherwise engaged. James has spoken to the Liverpool Courier. Rank bad seamanship. Violation of the elementary rule. I mean, but what good does this do now? Since when have you taken on the functions of the border trade? Petroleum, you said. Must have been refined. Yes, yes, but how do you know there weren't any more men left in the water? Well, the bodies would have floated ashore by now, wouldn't they? Now, who was the agent? McFarland. Where was it shipped from? Philadelphia. Aren't you going to tell him? Tell him? Oh, yes. Yes, Elizabeth. She's had some news. She's been sending out these. Very cheap. I don't know whatever came over it. Albert's died of fever. Die in the Argentine. They can't even bring a body home to rest. They're not even having a service, just those nasty little cards. I tell you, Fraser's broken over it. It's not half the man he was.
Well, aren't you going to say anything? I mean, I think you ought to call. It is family. And there's Robert's position to think of as well. He is their Member of Parliament. <laughs> You're like a couple of nanny goats. Bleat much more and you give milk. Captain Bay's called on Fraser. Aye, and he's only your employee. The Oberon's to be turned round for Philadelphia. You'll say that you're well-practised in the stowage of dangerous cargoes, and, if necessary, we'll convert our ships exclusively for that use. Yes, sir. Well, Captain Crawford, your first command. Thank you, sir. You deserve it. All right, off you go. Well, Captain Baines, what are you looking so worried about? His first command, and you ask him to carry a dangerous cargo like petroleum? Nonsense. We'll have a soldier's wind down the coast, and when he gets there, prizes, I hope. You'll have no soldier's wind, no, if I was going. Well, you're not. You'll stay here till you've made up your mind whose side you're on. Oh, but, sir, I've I... told you before, I don't want you creeping around there. Fraser's my competitor, and if I'm in the gutter, it'd be the culmination of everything that he's ever worked for, and if I'm on top, it's what I've worked for. Now, that is the business. He's shot his boats on steamships. That's where I profit. And I mean to, but not with you running around there with your cap in your hand. I took him the life belt, sir. Oh, short of life belts, are they? Fetching a price. Hmm? The Ellen May life belt, sir. The Ellen May went down with all hands through negligent seamanship. And it's just as well it was all hands, sir. What do you mean by that? I've never heard of a boat go down with all hands that close inshore and in a flat calm, sir. Your prognostications are very interesting. But not in my time, and not in my competitor's office. I still think we should have put a boat out, sir, and I'll say as much at the inquiry. Oh, you will, will you? If I'm asked. And if you're not asked. Captain O'Neill, sir. I don't see no profit in this. Helen May went down with all hands. The matter is closed. What have you got that? Was the soup not your liking, Mr. O'Neiden? I've no appetite. I have a fowl prepared. I made inquiries. You said to like it spiced. Ah, well, you can take it away again. Are you sure you wouldn't like something else? Quite sure. Some sweet? How many times do you have to be told?
sharp. I'm not myself. No, you don't, eh? I didn't think you'd remember. I was in and out of your father's shop as a child. Moffat. Moffat. Oh, I was Ada Felton. Nehemiah Felton's daughter. Mm. We had the farriers. Oh, I don't remember. You were away at sea so much. Here. Yeah. Wasn't your husband Sam Moffat? Yeah. Aye, at the Moffat Steam Navigation Company. Yes. Ah. He died and we lost everything. He was a young man. His health went. He was one of many who found out too late. Found out what? That the way they live's not worth a candle. How do they live? He was impatient, rude even, no thought for others. Well, me included. Nothing mattered to him except his pocket. Well, what happened to his pocket? Fraser squeezed him out. Maybe I'll have that foul call tomorrow. I hope to give satisfaction. Well, I wouldn't try too hard. None have succeeded so far. How did Fraser squeeze out your husband? He was in building ships and small craft, mostly. He had to have access to the river. Uh, he bought the land around him. Yeah. And the sawmills that supplied him. I can imagine. Here, when your husband knew he was done for... Uh, you don't mind me asking you? No, Mr O'Neiden. I well. When he knew uh, he was on his uppers, uh, didn't he pay more attention to you then? No. He was that ashamed. I can understand that. Pride. My own regrets and fears. Everything he'd hoped for just crumbled about his ears. Access? He should have known. No. His health went first. Here, that's Captain Baines. I'm not at all. Nor my brother Robert. Nor his wife. It's Mrs. Fraser. Oh, my sister. What an honour. Well, you better show her in. Elizabeth. So, you're down to Ada Felton then? Down to her? Down to her? What do you mean, down to her? Never mind, it's your life. Look, she's my housekeeper. She was engaged during my absence. She's doing her very best to give satisfaction. Poor woman. Look, to what do I owe this pleasure? You're not here at a morality office, huh? I called because you showed no sign of calling on me. But then, if you've been otherwise engaged here... I've been at sea. Fog-bound? Ah, you know what else. You should get her to open a window, James. I feel the cold. It's musty. It smells like a ship. Well, she's been closed up. It's not been cleaned, either. Well, if I'd known I had to receive you quite so soon, I'd have taken the cuckoo out of the clock and given it a shine. You didn't get my card? No. Brother Robert told me. He called? Oh, I. Well, father-in-law has been expecting you. Yeah, I dare say. He's getting on, James. He set store by these courtesies. Yes, so I've heard. But you didn't see fit to call. Elizabeth, uh, if you're getting a little parched with all this accusation, there's little Andell there. I dare say the Moffat can be procured to find you some mint tea. I called because it seemed to be in your interest to come to some arrangement with father-in-law. You don't help matters by rudeness to him or me. Oh, Elizabeth. Without Albert, things would have been very different, no matter how successful you are now. Oh, well, thank you for that. 
Well, you can but take heed of Fraser and Fraser's yards. Your neighbours along the dock as well as competitors. Yeah, I know the next rhyme. By coincidence, I've just heard it. Access, eh? He can make things difficult for uh, you. No more than that, though. Look, you were the only one in the family who didn't call. Even Captain Baines called. Look, Elizabeth, now, if I had called, what would I have said to him? Well, I will tell you. Nothing! Now, what have you come here for? I came to see you. Oh, I... On whose behalf? There are things... Ah, I thought... ...that concern Fraser and yourself, but ah. I've no mind to go into them. <laughs> yeah, cos he's tied to his bootlaces for ready cash. Nothing of the sort, but it would help if you were on terms. Why would it? Because you might need each other. Not I! You need no one, then. Elizabeth, I am glad you call. No, I am. Ha, I forgot what you were like. I forgot what you expected of me. First time to bleed for your loss. Poor old Albert, pictured to the wall, cloth over the canary. Then I'm to bleed for Fraser. Who else shall I bleed for? Oh, yes, poor old Fogarty, halfway across the world, shearing sheep. What hypocrisy. Just like it used to be, with Callum breathing down my neck and the rest of the family expected to curtsy. You forget yourself. No, I do not. Look, Fraser's cracking up. He'd better get out before he goes through, because now that Albert's gone, there'll be nobody to run that firm after him. There will. No, there will not. You see, after him, nobody. So he'd better sell while he's still got some assets. And now, as for me, you'd do better not to quarrel with me. You'll finish up in a little milliners. I dare say leached onto me like the rest of them. Thought to bring some light refreshment. Miss Joe Needin. Stimulants. All he does is sleep. Pocketry said to keep him warm, now tells. Has he spoken? He mumbles. A great explosion. And men in the water? He uh, makes no sense. The moment he speaks, inform me. He's better off undisturbed. The apothecary, no more. The man makes no sense as yet, but he's a young man. He'll live. What will he say? Ah. Well, whatever it is, it can't be to James's credit. There was another man to see you from the agents. Is there still hope of a charter? Oh, this great argument about the carriage of these petroleum substances. Between steam and sail? More besides. There are those who say that iron casks are preferable to wood. Some say it should be a deck cargo only. Myself, I... What? Well, it was Albert's belief that these petroleum substances should always be carried in bulk. Bulk? But casks are bulk. He had in mind a ship that was one great cask. He made drawings. If it could be carried in bulk, it could also be stored in bulk and easier to offload. Where are these drawings now? Where is anything of Albert's now? He'll be in the Chandry with his other drawings. And James has his fingers on them. <laughs> Not he. He wouldn't understand them. He sticks obstinately to sail. Robert would know, though. Robert never throws anything away. I keep seeing that man in the water. And all those besides. And all that fog. And waste. McFarl and the agents. They should see these drawings. Hey, you haven't seen Captain Baines. Ah, 
Tommy McGregor. Haven't you found a berth yet? Uh, no, sir. I'm still looking. And I thought you'd be Philadelphia bound on the Oberon. Ah, well, I've made that run many times. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir. Sorry? There's no need for that. In this game, Tommy, you've got to be prepared for every wind that blows. No good lying idle feeling sorry for yourself. There's always something to learn. I mean, uh, take this manila here. And you see the lay of it. Captain Benz, that ship that nearly ran us down, well, there's a man being picked up off it. They've kept him tallying to Quincy Street, not told no one. A man? Off the Helen May, sir. No lad. Yes, sir. Mr. Fraser's been in and out the house there. My sister's cook. She knew I was on the Oberon. They don't want no one to know until he said what he's got to say. What he's got to say? Yes, sir. And my sister says that if they prove she was charging about like a washer. Well, and she was? Well, if they prove that, no more petroleum cargo will go Fraser's way. Well? But if they prove there were survivors in the water, then Captain O'Needon's for it. Was well, that true, sir? Has this man spoken? Oh, I don't know. They took him off as soon as he was better. All that I can tell you is that he's not here. But he must be here. He's not. Look, he's not been to the yard in days, he's not took ship and he's not gone away, so he must be here. Now, you tell him Captain Baines, a matter most urgent, and I'll not leave till I find him. Well, I can't tell him if he's not here. Look, my name is Baines. I know your name, and he's not here. Well, where is he? He's left. Left? And no address given. Good night, sir. Well, the man's to be produced at the inquiry. Fraser's kept him tally. But why? Well, for what he'll say. There were men in the water, then. After all James said. Aye, and he's not to be found. I know he's not to be found. That woman ate a muffet. I advised against employing her. No, you did not. Well, I would have if you'd asked me. Well, she's there, but she says he's left. Where is he now? Not a word has he said to us about anything. The one thing I'm certain, the inquiry can't affect James. What, with men left to drown in the water? We don't know that. Well, I'm sure of it. Look, Captain Baines, I don't know quite how to say this, but, well, they have a way at these marine courts of inquiry, phrases of their own. And, well, at the material time, James was not in command of the Oberon. What do you mean? He was there. He told me to take the clout over. I'd ordered the cover broken off the longboat, and he said when the fog lifts, and not before. Aye, but as owner. Owner? Aye, owner can only advise. What are you saying to me, sir? Look, I'm not saying this for myself or for my wife here. I understand. I know James. But at the material time, Captain Baines, you were, in all respects, master of the Oberon. And even with the presence of the owner on board, the law has it that the master is, at all times, in sole command. The responsibility was yours, Captain Baines, I'm afraid, and yours alone. You'll not find me ungrateful, Mr. Harvey. I understand, sir. Anything you can see? Yes, sir. Well, I must leave it to you, then. Oh, this is Mr. Harvey, fully recovered. How do you do, Mr. Harvey? I didn't think to see such a young man. If it's anyone I did, you'd have given him a wide berth. Not too wide, I hope, ma'am. Well, Mr. Harvey, I hope to be grateful to you. You may be able to fob off Captain Baines, but you can't fool me. You know who I am, do you? Robert O'Neill. Yes, and I'm also your Member of Parliament, and I'm inquiring after my brother, your employer. Well, I don't know where he is. He, he took a carriage in the middle of the night. The middle of the night? He left without saying. He, he had... Well, he had an altercation with your, uh, with your sister. He went to bed soon after, and then he got up again and he left. He didn't take any nightclothes with him or anything. I'm as worried as you are.
Quite obviously, it's some act of malice, some unexplained deed, a blow struck in some alley, some lout bent on revenge. He's offended many. The ship's gone out of here, undermanned and underfed. Oh, there's plenty bears, drudges, both high and low. You mean it's passed on? Sarah, I have always been one to examine every possibility and never to flinch from the worst. Father, my father used to have a favourite quotation. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, then speak to me. And he always used to look at me when he said it, as if he knew I'd lost. But the authorities would have found him if he'd died. Look, he's been but... gone a week. Look, I just came to get some of Albert's drawings. And how you can pester me with uh, engineering drawings at a time like this, I don't know. You really think James is dead? It has to be considered. Oh, Robert, give her the drawings. There were Alberts. It's James I'm thinking on. I'm sorry. It's all right. He doesn't mean it. Sentimental value. It's like a floater moving inside the eye. Imagine weed trailing in a goldfish bowl. Well, the eye is like a bowl, entirely self-contained. I would have expected it to be clear by now, but it's not. Doctor, I don't understand. When I look in the mirror, I don't see anything. I keep telling you, it's inside the eye. Blood getting into the vitreous. What can I do? Nothing. Look, I'll do nothing. I've been here a week. You say you've been on a long voyage. Lack of variety in diet. And all you can do is improve your general condition. Lay quiet. Go away. Can't say. Doctor, uh, look. Uh, is there a chance that I might go blind? Can't say. Can't say. Some have, some haven't. All I can tell you is that you're not to read anything, not to lift things, nor to bend, not even to pull on your boots. And see, your bowels are kept open. Now then, where will I send you a bill? Office, I think. Doctor. Always better to deal with offices. Right then, you can go home now. All you have to do is lay quiet. I can't lay quiet. Then you have to suffer. delivered the message. Anybody see you? No. And no one knows. What does the doctor say? Says after suffer. Perhaps it's come as a warning then. Are you very frightened? Well, you'd best get out of bed then. I can't bend. Then don't. Not lift anything heavy. Oh, there couldn't be a worse. What's what? Invalid. And then it goes on to list all the disasters. Explosion off Boston. Schooner owned by E.W. Pratt carrying coal oil. Another. The Bark Eduardo carrying petroleum spirit. Everyone blown skywards. And then, then, then it, there's today in the Lloyd's List. And where is it now? Where? Here, Tuesday, here, the 15th, naphtha, explosion all aboard, blown in the air. And in not one instance has the cause been properly ascertained. Good Lord. I didn't see that. Hey, listen. Philadelphia, listen. Oberon delayed from sailing. Unable to muster a crew. Your brother was here again. I managed to put him off. He left the paper in the Lloyd's list. I can't read that. I told him. He mumbled something about uh, the Obron. Something about the survivor appearing today. 
Oh. At the Court of Inquiry. Mm-hmm. You knew? Yeah, careful of them, they cost. Oh, and you match. Sat here like a babby. To do nothing. <laughs> Can you imagine? I don't imagine. I know. I'm grateful to you, Mrs. Muffet. Well, there's a start, then. Uh, Mr. Harveys, I understand that you were a passenger aboard the Helen May, although you have a chief officer's certificate and are trained in both sail and steam. Yes, sir. Now, you've heard the President express his congratulations on your fortuitous recovery. I wonder if you can help us further. I'll do the best I can, sir. Were you aware of the nature of the Helen May's cargo? No, sir. You were not? No, sir. I took passage in a hurry from Philadelphia and spent most of the time in my cabin. Why was that? I was preparing for my master's ticket and studying, sir. But surely you knew the nature of the cargo. No, sir. Uh, I'd neglected my studies, and so it was all I could do to memorize the Viva Voce guide that I had with me. So you had no knowledge of the cargo whatsoever? No, sir. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Harvey, I wonder if you can help us in another matter. It has been suggested that some blame be laid upon the master of the Oberon, which was anchored off. Now, after the explosion occurred, were there any other survivors in the water besides yourself? I'm afraid I can't help you there either, sir. You told us that you'd gone on deck and were blown off the forecastle head. Yes, sir. Well, then, once you were in the water, were there cries? Uh, no, sir. I have no memory except for the sight of the rocks appearing through the fog. I heard nothing at all. Nothing at all? No, sir. I was deafened by the explosion. Mr. Harvey, you told us that you were on the forecastle. Then can you tell us whether or not there was a leadsman taking soundings in the chains? No, sir, there was not. At the speed she was doing, a lead wouldn't fetch the bottom. Ah, at what speed was that? Between six to eight knots, sir. Are you telling us that this vessel was proceeding at full speed in that visibility? To the best of my recollection, yes, sir. <laughs> The court can but conclude that in the loss of the Ellen May, there was a grave dereliction of duty on the part of the master, and that in the visibility then existing, the prudent course was to reduce speed and come to anchor. You're right, sir. I know I was right. Uh, but I've still to rest and build myself up. Still, the eye is on the men, eh? Well, my general condition is still a matter of public concern. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll tell you what I think of that report. It's all my eye and Betty Martin. Not my part of it. Oh, get away, man. Freezer tried to nobble you. He tried. He was wasting his time. I spoke the truth. There was no leadsman. I remember that. And I remember the speed. Nothing else until I saw the rocks. Uh, well, I still think we should have put a boat out. I would have thanked you for it. Well, there, then. That's the truth. No, not quite. Fraser offered me favours, a berth, promises. <laughs> Noble, I said. No, Mr. O'Neiden tried the nobbling. Mr. O'Neiden? Money. Money? A purse of guineas to save your ticket if there were men in the water. But there were none, so you needn't reproach yourself. Well, gentlemen, my condition doesn't preclude a little light refreshment. Are you, Mr. Harvey? Thank you, sir. And you, Captain Baines? No, sir. I'll just be glad to get to sea again. Oh, come on, man. No, sir. That's all I understand, and it's all I want to understand. You told him. He asked. Ah, oh, well. Conscience lies hard on the convalescence. <laughs> There, on the steps. Do you mean James spoke to him as well as yourself? He must have done. Ah, good morning, Elizabeth. Well, I expected you to call during my convalescence. Not when you're suborning witnesses. Suborning? Suborning nothing. Mr. Harvey here was telling the truth. As it happens, he was in passage on the Helen May to take up a mate's berth in my employ. And he'd have told you that if you'd have asked him. Suborning? Ah, you have come out of morning, haven't you, eh? What next, then, eh? I might have called myself. No, oh, you, Fraser. And for what purpose? To offer my condolences. 
I heard the Oberon was stranded in Philadelphia without a crew. Ah, well, that is to be expected. There's been three explosions in a month. That's a normal hazard of the sea, but petroleum is a dangerous cargo to carry. Yes, I am aware of that, Fraser. Then I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that my son's drawings have most impressed McFarland. What drawings? He devoted a great deal of his time to the storage of dangerous cargoes. We took his drawings to McFarland, and they're in passage to Philadelphia now. We? Really? Where did you get hold of these drawings? The offer is still open, Mr. Harvey. A regular run to Philadelphia. My sister. <laughs> Madam Petroleum. Your sister? Oh. And I had her all neatly packaged in a little millinetta. 